Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. So today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the mammogram and breast tomosynthesis. This sort of study is done mostly for screening purposes and also for uh, further evaluation, like a diagnostic mammogram or tomosynthesis of known abnormality. I'm going to reference the most recent BIRADS lexicon, which is the 2013 version in the making of this video, similar as to in the um, kind of companion book. Um, it's useful in taking a look at these to kind of get a sense of what has been going on with the patient, their history, risk factors, and, you know, and then look specifically for the, the different potential abnormalities, masses, architectural distortions, calcifications, kind of separately, because a lot of times these can be subtle. Um, and then getting, you know, it, it can be easy to kind of gloss over one of them if you're kind of trying to look for everything at once. Um, Having a sense as to where people tend to miss things or where the blind spots are can also improve your ability to detect uh, abnormality with this sort of study. Um, so this is going to be a pretty basic, very much an, introduc an introductory uh, approach to, to, to taking a look at this sort of study. Um, in terms of overall uh, kind of arc, you know, uh, structure or organization of how we're going to approach this sort of study, first you want to take we're going to take a look at the indications in history. Then we're going to um, take a look at the study, look for its adequacy, the positioning of the patient, and the things that may limit our ability to um, understand what's going on. Um, then we'll assess the overall breast density and morphology, look specifically for masses and distortions, then look specifically for calcifications, which may be suspicious. If there are specialized sorts of views, you'll go through those in a uh, search with a search pattern or a technique that's similar as to the conventional views and then if your institution provides computer aided detection we are going to check that as a, as a last uh, step all right so let's jump into this all right so each uh, each place that you may potentially practice may have different hanging protocols packs um, in our particular workspace, and this is just by convention, so the, the, the current study is provided initially at the bottom, and then a prior study is actually at the top, MLO and CC views, and I'll go through like the different views, and we'll talk about the approach on, you know, on specific views um, and, uh, and, and image sets. So before we even really approach the study, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the detail of the kind of, you know, homework you want to do in terms of really understanding what's going on with the patient. You want to, you're going to want to go through prior mammograms, breast ultrasound, MRI, and then and check those reports, see if there's a known abnormality. In rare circumstances, things may have been seen on prior, um, like a non-breast imaging, whether CT, MRI, other cross-sectional, um, or other reasons that you want to go back and just get a sense as to what was picked up uh, in that particular circumstance. If there's prior breast biopsy, surgical history, treatment history, you know, high risk uh, sort of um, patient patient factors, you want to have a sense of that. The The appearance of the breast is also going to depend on things like the, if the patient is pregnant, lactating, um, if they're on any sort of medications or have any um, kind of clinical factors that impact their hormones. Um, and that can also, you know, change the appearance of the breast. So, so let's, you know, once, once we have all that in mind, now we can kind of go through and take a look at, you know, really what is going, you know, uh, take a look at how to approach the assessment of, of mammograms. So first we're going to go and um, – we're just going to focus here on this kind of the lower panels and this kind of more overall view can be useful to get an overall sense of any distribution of abnormality the adequacy um, and, and then let's let's kind of go through and, uh, and and I'll show you here we've got the MLO and see you know and then we've got you know close-ups of the MLO and then the CC and then on each of these you know you, we want to get a sense of the overall limitations if any of the sort of study so you want to look at you know the posterior nipple line it does it intersect the pack on both sides is there a convex appearance of the park uh, mus uh, musculature um, is there an inframammary fold or you know other sc or skin abnormalities um, is there is the you know comparing the you know nipple pack distance you know whether kind of by measure or by you know um, as best you can between the MLO and CC is that uh, kind of within like a centimeter are there skin folds you know on either of the view the obscure parts of the breast is there motion artifact things like this will impact your ability to interpret the study and if there's a significant um, 
kind of limitations, you may have to buy red zero, uh, a screening, um, you know, uh, and have the patient come back if the patient's not already, uh, if it can't be corrected right then. All right. And overall, as we go through the t these two, you also want to first maybe then take a look at the overall breast density and, and you know, if, if uh, and assess and, you know, comparing to prior, you know, you're, you're really going to bucket the patient into, you know, buckets of entirely fatty, scattered uh, fibroglandular tissue, heterogeneously dense or extremely dense. And you kind of look at these, the both projections to kind of decide on that. Um, and, and, and yes, and can be useful to know the context of, of what was previously described and changes over time. As we look at these two kind of these uh, important, uh, the MLL and the CC, you want to get a sense of overall symmetry. Um, if there has been, you know, a uh, change in the overall density of the breast and the overall appearance of the breast compared to prior, um, you know, and again, this, this is the prior up here and the current down here. Um, and, you know, usually it's good practice to go back at least two years as develop, you know, changes over can be subtle um, on, you know, with shorter intervals. And going back, you know, across multiple studies is really good practice and is especially important in breast imaging. Um, you, it's, it is important to keep in mind, however, that even things that have been uh, stable in appearance over time are not necessarily benign. Um, in certain circumstances, things that have uh, concerning features, pretty much any sort of concerning feature, even if it has been similar over time, you know, such as a speculated mass, pleomorphic calcifications, things like this, are, are doesn't really matter if it's been the same. That there, the, that should still kind of raise a flag in your mind and warrant at least consideration for potential further investigation if it hasn't already been characterized in some other sort of way. Um, and again, as we compare it to prior, we're looking for changes in breast density and size um, and then it's, it's it's also useful to kind of as you as we go through and we're just kind of getting started here is to ask yourself what's the densest part of each breast um, at, on the available views as if the the you know breast cancers are, are frequently not always but uh, dense and so getting a sense of what is the densest area within each breast can help give you start you know keying you into things you want to uh, uh, um, uh, investigate further and when you are looking for abnormality and, and one of the things you want to keep in mind as we kind of go deeper and then into the tomosynthesis sort of views is anytime we do find an abnormality we want to keep in mind to look at potential involvement of the skin the nipple if there's associated adenopathy um, if there's trabecular thickening of, of the breast you know and, and again we're going to see some of the axial up here in, in terms of being able to look for adenopathy in addition to any potential intramammillary nodes okay so as we go through, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit more about potential blind spots um, and, 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 where, and where, to, where, where to be careful about looking at those. So just keeping in mind that as you look at this, this the, here's the two, 2D views, uh, MLL first. I want to point out a couple of the, the you know, commonly recognized blind spots, frequently the axilla, retroglandular fat, um, the uh, kind of retro areolar region and just by the nipple are regions where, where there is abnormality, um, it can be easy to go by. So those are frequently good things to make sure that we check first. Checking the border between the fat and the fibroglandular tissue is another potential area. Making sure that that's similar over time um, can, be, can be useful and that, that that's kind of a preser preserved kind of interface. Um, when we're going through the study and, and here we'll kind of go more to the dedicated um, MLO. So we have the current and we have the prior here. Um, it can be useful uh, to, to go through and then after we assess the various, you know, go through and, and, and see if the study is adequate and we, and we, and, and it can be useful then to look at the blind, kind of blind spots first. And then it, as long as you're covering the whole breast anatomy, this it can, you know, it can be useful um, to go from like a zigzag top top-down pattern, um, any sort of way in which you look at the sort of the study in a way that covers the entirety of the anatomy with particular um, attention to the areas where it's easier to miss things uh, that can be uh, any sort of approach that does cover the entire anatomy uh, can work. Um, it's useful to compare not just the current and the prior, but side to side. Um, and it can be useful in if finding an abnormality to compare to to also correlate and make sure that we're we're figuring it out both on the MLL and the CC. Um, and let's now go to 
here we go. So here we got the prior, we got the current, and then just making sure that we're uh, taking a look, uh, going through and you know covering the entirety of the breast anatomy um, on both of those views. If, as we go through, and here we're going back to the MLO, you're going to encounter, um, if, if your institution does it, um, tomosynthesis views. And this is increasingly used um, for kind of benefits in specific, you know, sensitive, sensitivity and specificity in picking up abnormalities. As we look at tomosynthesis images, you're, you can apply a similar search pattern or, or, or mechan you know, way of approaching this as you do for you know, just the 2D images. You can divide the breast into multiple areas and scroll back and forth through the depth of the breast tissue um, and to make sure that you just cover the entirety of the breast anatomy. Again, keeping in, uh, in mind those um, potential blind spots and making sure that we see that you go through the whole depth of the stack as you scroll through. So like keeping your eye here and then going back and forth, keeping your eye in the next area and going back and forth, and then making sure that you go through the entirety of the anatomy and keeping, you know, particular eyes on, you know, the uh, fibroglandular fat interface, axilla, um, the retroglandular fat, the retroalveolar, and by the nipple sort of areas. Um, and then you, this can be useful to correlate with, uh, you know, the 2D images that we have in some kinds, sometimes um, a synthesized or, you know, um, 2D projection that can be useful also. So in, in going through and looking at the, to, the 2D views and the tomosynthesis, you're looking for you know, mass lesions, asymmetry, uh, architectural distortion, and then it can be particularly useful, especially on the kind of synthesis, like either if you have conventional uh, 2D views or a synthesized 2D views from the tomographic images um, to look then specifically for calcifications going through in a, in a similar um, sort of search pattern, okay? Um, so doing that both on conventional 2D, tomosynthesis, and sometimes you'll have these projection images and, and, and just look quickly at those two. And they're repeating a similar sort of um, approach in making sure we look both at the MLO and the CC and then going through the full depth of the anatomy on both the MLO and the CC, and the CC view, making sure we're being uh, particularly careful or, or it's easy to miss things, okay? And then going through looking at the projection images as well and then correlating current to prior and um, uh, left left to right and then making sure that any abnormality we correlate between the CC and, M and MLO view to better get a sense of where it is and what it looks like in the three dimensions as possible. Let's kind of go through and it will, so that was the right breast and then we're going to repeat the same sort of approach for the left breast. Okay, and we'll just make it through these images. And let's give you a sense of where this overall organization of looking at. There you go, and then. Okay, and at the end, uh, if there are special views, such as a true lateral, an exaggerated uh, CC view, rolled cleavage views, etc., you want to use a similar sort of approach covering the entirety of the anatomy to look for abnormality uh, on those views as well. Um, there, those are uh, more commonly used in diagnostic mammograms than in screening mammograms, and you can apply a similar approach um, to make sure that you cover uh, all, all the potential anatomy on those as well. Um, the last bit is that kind of uh, like the more global look that we had previously at some institutions may provide you with computer aided uh, detection and you just want to at least make sure that any marked areas on those that you, you take a closer look to make sure that there is not um, some sort of suspicious abnormality. Um, the combination of computer aided detection and radiologist assessment can make the, uh, can improve the sensitivity. Um, and the accuracy of interpretation. Um, and so finally, once you've taken a look at all the potential abnormalities, you compare it to prior and assess them on the mul multiple views, you want to put that in the context of the patient, understand what's going on, and then you're we're, and then not just correlating what we have within the study, but then, you know, if there's concurrent ultrasound, uh, understanding any sort of abnormality in that context as well. Um, 
you know, as a recap, to take a look at the mammogram, the overall organization includes taking on understanding the patient context, the history, priors, getting a sense as to if there's any limitations, if, if the study is really diagnostic or not, looking at overall breast density morphology, and then we're going to look for specific abnormalities, masses, distortions, things like that, and specifically looking for calcifications, particularly on 2D or synthesized 2D views, and then going through um, the tomographic images for uh, – for each breast, each projection, and then using the specialized views or, and the uh, computer aid detection to, to help us uh, sort out and be more sensitive for any potential abnormality.